In this video, I will construct and install the massive 800mm gun for this model. This video will be a bit different compared to the other videos in this build series, mainly because it will include many not photo etch parts. Most of the resin parts are used in this step to create the base of the gun, and also to create the support structures that hold up the gun. In addition to installing the gun, I'll also build and install some of the details that go on this gun handling platform. Since I need to use pretty much all of the resin pieces to begin the construction of the gun, I suppose it makes sense for me to start this video by cutting the resin parts off of their sprues, although I'm not really sure that I could call them a sprue, but this frame maybe that they're connected to, and then cleaning them up. The concern that I have when cutting resin parts is that it can fracture badly and then damage the part that you're trying to keep. I think the best way to remove it is probably to use a saw, but I don't have a saw, so I'm just gonna use my side cutters. I make my first cuts into the resin quite far back from the part. I want a lot of excess resin between the location of the cut and the actual part that I'm trying to remove, so that any rough edges or fractures that take place while cutting don't progress all the way to the part that I'm trying to remove. Resin does sand very nicely, so if there is quite a lot of excess on the part, you can sand it back quite easily. So I'd rather take it in steps, initially cut quite far back, move excess, and then take off layer at a time until I get reasonably close to the part. And then when I'm close to the part, I'll use a file to remove the last bit of excess resin so that I can get a nice clean finish. Resin does sand very nicely. I find it to be a bit softer than plastic. So you do need to be careful not to remove too much accidentally. When sanding parts that are supposed to be symmetrical, I try to sand them together just to ensure that I can get the edges to be the exact same length. This is less of a concern if the parts are far apart from each other, like if it was a ship and they were on other sides of the ship, but for something like this, where they're going to be less than a centimeter away from each other, I think it'd be quite noticeable if the parts weren't the same length. So in this case, I hold the parts next to each other and sand them together to ensure that they are the same length. On this block that forms the breech of the gun, there is a lot of excess resin, this block I couldn't cut very close because it would have then fractured and then gone into the box itself and caused damage to the part, which I then would need to fix with putty. So in this case, because it's so thick, that connection point, I had to cut it far back and now I have to do a lot of sanding to get it smooth. But as you can see, the resin does remove very easily, so that's not such an issue. I think this is a much better way of going about removing the part rather than cutting too close and then causing damage that has to be repaired later. I need to be quite careful about these surfaces on the base of the barrel because they need to be both flat and not skew. If they are skewed, then the barrel is not going to sit straight or the breech at the back of the barrel will not sit straight. At this point though, my major concern is how these hinges are going to connect up because they don't look level to me. It doesn't sit nicely. I'm not overly concerned about this block that connects to the base of the gun, primarily because it's very short. So if it is slightly skew, you won't be able to notice it. I'm more concerned about the other end and the barrel that's going to attach to it, which is obviously very long, and if it's skewed, that is going to be noticeable. So at this stage, I'm just going to do a series of test fits just to see how the parts interact with each other and see if there's a way that I can put these things together that's going to work quite nicely. Decided not to try and clean up this face into which the barrel will be inserted. And that's because I need it to be perfectly flat and not skew. If it's at all skew, the barrel will then be skew, and that will then ruin the effect of the model. So I'm going to leave it in this rather rough state, with the understanding that the base of the metal barrel will pretty much completely cover the surface, and any defects that are on it will not be visible. I'm also going to drill a hole bigger than is required, so that it'll give me enough space to maneuver the barrel in that hole such that it is properly centered. If I fill the hole with super glue, when it dries, it will be plenty strong. So I don't need to get the hole perfectly centered. As long as the hole is big enough for me to move the barrel around in it, I will be able to properly align this resin base with the metal barrel. For better control, I start with a small bit and I then increase the size until I get it large enough such that I can easily insert and maneuver the barrel. It fits in very easily now, and there's a little bit of play in it, so I can maneuver it into the correct position. So now I'm happy with the barrel side. That's all gonna work out just fine. So now I need to just focus on this block. 
because although if it is a bit skew it's okay i still need to to sit horizontally i don't want the block to sit at an angle like it's collapsing down on one side and because this side was connected to the sprue there is going to be an imperfect sanding there's going to be a bit of a bow on it or an angle on it and i'm going to have to try and fill that with putty so i'm going to spend a bit of time working on this side of the gun to get this block centered at level and then have that gap filled with some putty first step is to get it centered i find the camera quite useful for checking if the part is centered correctly since this camera has been leveled i can use it to look perfectly down on the part if i place it in the center of the frame so I do that and check to see everything's in center and standing up perfectly vertically. Well, it looked centered and vertical, but I'm not sure that the block is perfectly level. So I'm going to spend a bit of time rotating it to get into the correct position. Since I'm now happy with the position of that block, I'm now going to fill the gap with Tamiya plastic putty. This putty can be dissolved using lacquer thinner and lacquer thinner will not harm the resin. This means you can apply it quite easily without having to worry too much about trying to remove it later and damaging the resin. Initially, I apply quite a lot of putty to try and force it into that gap. I find it quite difficult to get putty into the gap without getting it on the sides of the part. But that's not such an issue with putty and resin because this putty can be dissolved using lacquer thinner and lacquer thinner will not harm the resin. So any excess putty can easily be dissolved away using some lacquer thinner and a paintbrush. This is a bit of an iterative process. I go backwards and forwards, adding and removing until I get it to where I want it to be. Initially, I removed too much. I cut back into that groove that I was trying to fill. So I thinned out some more putty with lacquer thinner beforehand to help it run into the gap and then reapplied it to the gap. It's starting to look quite a lot better now, but there's still a lot of excess putty that needs to be removed, so I just need to clean that up quickly. I'm still not happy with it. It still is not sitting level. There's that dip in the putty that I don't want. I want it to be flat between that last collar of the gun and the block. But I keep on finding myself removing just a little bit too much and creating a trough. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to use a flat screwdriver to try and mash it flat, almost like a mini trowel and plastering. Let's see if I can get a better finish that way and then use less lacquer thinner to clean off the excess. Scraping it with the screwdriver like this seems to be working. Now I just need to be careful not to disturb the putty in the gap while I am cleaning this up. With such a thin and dilute layer, the putty dries very quickly. So I can sand off the excess just to make sure that the edge is nice and smooth. And I'm going to use a file to do that. Very, very light filing in this case. Barely any pressure, just trying to remove that little bit of extra putty that's caked onto the surface. And I'm also trying to get a nice clean line on this collar. The other thing that I'm doing with this file is to try and preserve that line on that collar. I want it to be clearly visible. I don't want that little, very, very small step to be caked in with putty and then to create a smooth curve upwards because that will conceal the line so i just need to make sure that this is all flat and clean and that that line is still visible and then any excess putty on these edges is just going to be sanded off as well now to preserve all those lines 90 degree angles now that the block is attached about as good as it's going to get i can install these tubes that sit on the top and bottom of the barrel to install them, I'm using super glue. Plastic glue will not work with resin. To install these parts, I use extra thick super glue. It's not entirely clear as to where they should be placed. So I'm kind of guessing at this point. And I'm trying to make it such that the part sits level with the block and these hinge points. This is not as easy as I would like it to be. If you compare it to how the photo edge parts in the earlier videos were latching together quite nicely, this is almost the exact opposite. It's not clear where the parts should be placed. And when you do place the parts where you think they should go, they just don't sit quite how you would like them to sit. The angles just don't seem to be quite right. So because of that, I'm going to spend a bit of time trying to make sure everything's level and in a position that I am happy with. Now that I got the ends that are closer to the base of the metal barrel up a little bit, they look like they're sitting horizontally and this is starting to look a lot better. 
I'm still concerned about the symmetry of those hinge points, but I guess that's going to be a problem for later on. At least at this point, it looks square. So now, I guess it is time to do a test fit with the hinge and see how this goes together. Clearly the holes are too small for the pins to go into them, so I'm going to need to open up those holes a bit. After doing a test fit with the base of the barrel installed in the hinges, I could see that those tubes that I installed on the top and bottom of the barrel just weren't sitting level. And that's an important thing for them to sit level. So I decided to remove them and then reinstall them while mounted in the hinge. I've temporarily glued these gun support structures to the card at the base. I know I can very easily remove the card, but it's important for this stage to have the base secure so I can make sure that everything is level. If it's not, then this part is going to look very odd and will ruin the whole effect of the model. Once I have the top tubing installed, I can remove the barrel from the hinges and then use the glued in place top set of tubing to position the set that goes underneath. And now the bottom set of tubes are installed, I can reinsert it into the hinge and check to see if everything is level. And this is looking much better. But you can see when I move this part around, how the hinges just aren't quite lining up properly. So this is not out of the woods yet. There's still potential for this whole thing to not line up correctly. It's really unfortunate that there wasn't more effort to mold this base correctly. Anyways, that's what I have to work with. So I'm just going to have to live with it. So I'm now going to break these hinge structures off of the card and clean up the base so that they can be installed on the model. There's still some excess resin on the end, which needs to be sanded off first. Once again, using a file to sand resin is very easy. It's just a matter of not overdoing it and cutting into the part. I think they've cleaned up quite nicely. I think I got it perfectly on that line. I just wanted to compare these parts to each other. And as you can see, the hinges are symmetrical to each other. The only thing that's not symmetrical is the hole on this base of the barrel that they have to push into. I'm still concerned that that is going to cause problems later on and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to fix that. But I'll consider that to be a problem for further down the road. Up next, I'm going to install the barrel into this resin base. To do that, I'm going to fill this hole with extra thick super glue and then insert the barrel and just hold it until the glue dries. I think I might have put too much glue in there. Either that or there is a air bubble in there. So I'm going to use a toothpick to pop it, get the air out and push the glue down in further. There we go. That's much better. So now I can gently insert the barrel, make sure that it is sitting flat against the resin part. And then I need to ensure that it is centered on the resin. I'm using the lines on the matters guide here trying to make sure that everything is perfectly straight. This needs to be done in two dimensions. I also need to look at it from the side and make sure that the barrel isn't drooping. And that kind of just popped out too easily. I don't think there's actually enough glue in there. So I'll put some more in and try again. And I'll put just small adjustments until I have it in the position that I want it. It's still not holding very well. I'm going to attempt the top down approach rather. That might be a better way of going about this. So I've placed the center frame and I'm just trying to aim the gun directly at the center of the lens. So you should just see a series of concentric rings. I don't expect this to be perfect, but I think that is about as good as I'm going to get it. So such a long gun that fractions of a degree make such a huge difference. I think this is going to be acceptable. So I'll now take the time to ensure that it is properly bonded in place. Let's apply extra thin super glue to the gap and let it run in. That should create a, a nice strong bond. Now to construct the walkways that sit in front of the resin hinges. There are a couple folds on this photo etch and this photo etch is incredibly delicate. So I start by making the big easy fold, which is to align the structure that sits underneath the walkway with the upper level of the walkway. And then I use extra thin super glue to glue it in place. There isn't really a good place for me to apply the glue. So I use tweezers to clamp it together and then apply the extra thin super glue to the edge as carefully as I can. Once the walkway is folded and glued together, I can then begin folding the rest of the part. 
these are 90 degree folds on very delicate photo etch. So I use the photo etch folding tool to make sure that I don't move any parts accidentally. I find the photo etch folding tool very useful in trying to fold a very delicate part that's quite long. It just helps ensure that you don't accidentally knock one edge out of alignment with the other edge. It keeps everything quite square. Unfortunately, the second structure did not fare quite as well as the first one. And some of these pillars have snapped off. Ugh, I knew these parts were going to give me guilty. Fortunately though, they do align very nicely with this base that I had previously constructed. Both the upper level and the lower level seem to fit perfectly. The only problem with this part are these very delicate vertical supports. On this one specifically, they are popping off all the time. It's very irritating. So I know the more I handle this part, the more damage is going to get done. So I'm going to glue it in place now just to try and secure it and limit the amount of times that I have to directly touch it. Once again, I'm using extra thin super glue to glue the part down. And now to try and reattach these vertical supports. Oh, you see, you just, you just touch them and they break. Oh, this is going to be difficult to get them back into position without losing them. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, this is going to be frustrating. After what felt like a very frustrating game of whack-a-mole, I eventually did manage to get all of the beams back into position, and I managed to find all the ones that popped off. But it was a case of every time I fixed one, another one would get bumped and it would fall off. This has not turned out how I would have liked it to have turned out, but it is what it is. So with that in place, now going to install the other side, which will hopefully be more cooperative. It was more cooperative during folding, so hopefully it'll be more cooperative during installation, and I won't lose any of these vertical supports. I do often find it's the case that one of the pieces wants to fight you, and the other piece is very cooperative. So hopefully this is the cooperative piece, because if the other piece was the cooperative piece, then I'm in for a bit of a nightmare now. And after a little bit of patience and superglue, this part is stuck down nicely with all its vertical supports intact. So I guess after all, this was the cooperative piece. It was just that other one that wanted to be difficult. Now that the photo etch is in place, I'm going to work on installing the resin pieces. You might be thinking I did this in the wrong order and that I should have stuck the photo etch railings to the resin part first, but I intentionally did not do it that way because I'm quite certain that when it comes to installing the gun, it will be easier for me to slide in the resin parts like this with the gun without the photo etch attached than it would be for me to attach the photo etch to the gun and then try and glue everything in place all in one go. In a way, the photo etch parts are almost going to be like an incredibly weak and delicate clamp to hold these resin parts into the correct location. I'm quite sure that if I did this any other way, I wouldn't be able to get the parts to fit together, or I would eventually be able to get the parts together, but it would require a huge amount of manhandling and I would damage a lot of components. For these resin parts, the bars that are on the side of them interfere with the walkway. Since in their current state, these resin hinges are not fitting in because of these bars interfering with the photo etch, I'm going to need to file down those bars to create a nice smooth surface for the photo etch walkway to sit against. This is actually not that difficult to do if you are aware that a file on the narrow edge will have one edge with grooves in it for actually filing and the other edge will be smooth. So in a case like this, you can place the smooth edge against the resin that you want to keep Put a bit of pressure on it without having to worry about it cutting into the resin and creating a groove where you don't want a groove and then use the other edge to file down the top of these beams to make them flat. Once that's done, the resin parts very easily slot into place and sit flush against the photo etch walkways. And now to do a test fit with the gun. To do this, I remove the resin hinges from the model I place the gun into the hinges, and then as a single unit, I place the gun and the hinges into its location on the base and use the photo etch as those, as I said, very weak clamps to hold everything in place. This would not be possible if I had glued everything to the hinges first. The hinges would not want to go into the correct place, and then I'd have to try and work out how to arrange everything with all this very delicate photo etch attached to the hinges. After a bit of positioning, I have enough information to know that it will sit correctly. The gun is sitting a little bit further back than it should, but that'll be easy enough to bring forward. 
So I think I'm happy with this and it is ready to be glued down. Big challenge is going to be gluing it down and making sure that this gun barrel stays centered. But at least that block at the back is sitting level and that it's not at some kind of noticeably skew angle. It probably isn't perfectly flat, but it's good enough visually. Now that I'm happy with the state of the gun barrel and those hinges, I'm going to move on to working on photo etch. There are a couple of details that I will install in this video. The idea is to install some of the larger details that won't make it too difficult to still handle the model. I expect to essentially paint in phases. So I'm quite happy to install the exposed photo etch that's going to be easy to paint on the model before painting it and then give the entire kit a second round of paint to blend everything in. These platforms go at the base of the pylons that I installed previously that connect the gun deck to the base of the gun support structure. They have a small notch that sits into a notch that's provided in the photo edge pylon. So it is quite easy to get them correctly located and installed. I'm also going to construct the components that go onto the gun handling platform. This mostly consists of a ram and then some trolleys used for transporting shells. One thing that I am wondering is how they got the shell from the trolley onto this platform where they can then use the ram to push it into the breech of the gun. Because I haven't seen any cranes for handling the shells and removing them from these trolleys and placing them onto this platform. And each shell weighs over seven tons, so it's not like people are just picking these things up and putting them in place. There must be some crane that they used to do it, but it doesn't seem to be represented in this kit. Right now I'm constructing the platform that they get placed onto before being pushed into the gun. This is a simple open bottom cube, effectively. This is once again the good photo etch, so it's quite easy to fold them into place. Once I have the sides in position, I use extra thick super glue applied to the inside of the part to glue the sides into place. Next I construct the gun ram. This is the platform onto which the ramming bar will sit. Presumably there is a motor encased in this raised housing at the end of it. Also being a square or rectangular type structure, this is not difficult to assemble. There does appear to be a design error for this part. As you can see, there is a notch on this box that needs to cover in between those two vertical rectangles that stick out of the structure to the right. And the notches for those to slot into are on the underneath of that part. So they put them on the wrong face. Because of that, I now need to cut them off. Otherwise, this cover will not sit flush against the base. With the notches removed, the cover slots into place quite nicely and it can be glued down. Unfortunately, all of the handling of this cover did weaken one of the edges and a panel fell off. So I have to now stick that part down individually. Not ideal, but uh, not so difficult to resolve. Because of those incorrectly placed notches, that was a little bit more complicated than it needed to be. Anyways, it's done. So now to move on to these railway trolleys that are used to transport the shells from the lift to the gun ram. These very small wheels need to be folded back onto themselves. Details this small are incredibly difficult to see. So I always question it when a model kit designer will do something like this. I mean, what are they actually trying to achieve here? They're putting in a level of detail that is going to increase the complexity to build the part, make it likely that you'll break off a wheel or lose a part, and the gain for it is practically zero, if not literally zero. I don't understand why these wheels could literally just not have been etched into the photo etch in this position where they have now been folded into. And as you can see in that process, I have already broken off one of the wheels, which means I now need to make sure that it gets stuck in place. Once folded over, I glue them in place with extra thin super glue because I just know if I don't glue them down, they will fall off and get lost. The last part to install for the trolleys and the gun ram are these shell holders. They are also made out of resin and once again they need to be removed and then cut to the appropriate length. Since they're all going to be near each other, I will cut them at the same time. The end that was closest to the connection point for all the resin parts seems to be a bit warped. 
So I'm going to cut from that end and then just align them so that they're all exactly the same length. I want them to all be the same length because they're going to be sitting very close to each other on the model. It's a bit of a guess as to where this part should go on the trolley. I'm just aiming for the center and I stick them down using a small drop of extra thick super glue. And finally, I install the last of these resin parts in the center of this platform. To complete the gun ram, I need to construct the ramming shaft itself. The ramming shaft is just a simple piece of plastic tube and it sits on top of these four structures. This is also a very delicate piece of photo etch, but fortunately it does not need to be handled much. Each of these four structures needs to be bent up into a vertical position such that the notch that sits in the center of them at the top can be used to hold the gun ram itself. The entire structure as a single piece is then glued to the base of the gun ram. With all the photo etch in place and now knowing the overall length of these parts, you can then do a test fit with the 1.5 millimeter plastic tubing and cut off a section that is of the appropriate length. I then place the plastic rod in its correct location and glue it down with extra thin superglue applied to the underneath of the tube. There's one final detail for the ram. There is a very small photo edge cap that goes on the end. To install that, I place a small drop of extra thick super glue on the end of the plastic rod. I then place the photo edge disc on the glue at the end of the rod and position it such that it is centered. The last piece of photo edge that needs to be installed for this gun ram is this wheel that sits at the back of it. There is a 90 degree corner on this wheel, which corresponds to the 90 degree corner in which it must slot. So it's just a simple matter of applying some extra thick glue to that corner and then sliding it into position. There are some simple photo edge details that can be installed onto the gun itself. There are details molded into the resin parts, but they are quite rough. So in those cases, I'm going to sand them off and then replace them with photo edge details just to get a crisper look. In the parts that have molded details in the resin, where the resin looks good, I'm going to rather leave the resin untouched and then just not use the photo etch replacement parts that are provided. Essentially, I would prefer to only install photo etch in places where I can very cleanly create a good flat surface for them to bond to. Otherwise, it looks like they're peeling off or they're not matching the curve of the part and then they start to look a bit odd. So. If I can avoid putting the photo etch on in places like this, I will. But for these tubes, the end caps on these tubes, I think the photo etch replacement parts will be considerably better than the details that are molded into the resin directly. I've reached the point now where painting can begin. I want to paint at this stage before installing the barrel because once again the barrel is going to obstruct some parts of this kit and that's just going to make it difficult for me to get paint everywhere and also I have installed some additional photo etch. So I'll give it another coat now. In the previous video you might have noticed that there were some gaps in the paint coverage so I'm also going to touch that up. When it comes to painting the barrel I've decided that I should cheat. Instead of trying to paint everything in gray and then mask off the area and paint it in silver, I thought, well, the barrel is already silver, so why don't I use that color? So I will mask off the areas where I want silver without any paint applied to the barrel. I will then later on, once remove the tape, spray the entire barrel in a gloss coat to protect the underlying metal and paint and then avoid having to go through the process of trying to find a reasonable silver approximate color because the barrel is already the correct color so might as well leave it exposed. After masking off the few bands of silver on the barrel I then spray the entire gun in XF63 German Grey. While the paint is out, I can also paint all of the other structures that I've constructed so far. I then spray the rest of the components that I have built in this video in German Grey. Almost everything in this model is German Grey. There's just the planking on the front and rear of the railway carriages, the cables, which I will paint in black, or the cranes, and then the gun barrel with those silver straps in it that aren't painted in German Grey. So from a painting perspective, it's quite a boring model. Everything goes in the same color. Now to have a quick look to see how that masking has worked. Hopefully we have nice clean bands of silver in the locations where they should be. 
That first one looks pretty good. Now for the bigger one. Yeah, I think that looks really nice. And this is the perfect effect. I don't think I could achieve the effect of the bare metal with paint. So I think this was a, a good way to go. It was a cheat, but I think it was a good cheat. As previously demonstrated, it's not possible to install the gun in between these hinges after they are glued into the model. Obviously that's the case, otherwise the gun would just fall out. To install the gun barrel, I place it in between its hinges and gently hold them together and then slide the entire structure into place between the photo edge walkways. The photo edge walkways will then act as that very delicate clamp to hold them together and give me the time to correctly position the bases of the hinges and glue them down. Once the hinges are attached, I can then glue the barrel into position. I want it angled up roughly 30 to 40 degrees. I don't want it to be sitting perfectly horizontal. So I elevate it into what I think is a good position and then I apply extra thin super glue to the hinges to bond it in place. With the gun in position, I then proceed to install the gun handling platform and its associated machinery. As more and more details get added onto this kit, it becomes more and more difficult to handle. Although it looks big on screen, when you hold it, in reality, this kit is very small. There's just not a lot of place where you can get a good grip of it. And the result of that is that I am knocking off bits here and there. This is part of the reason why I wanted to install the gun barrel because the gun barrel quite strangely becomes in effect a good handle for me to then grip this kit with. I know that that is the one clean place that I can hold this model without causing damage. And if I do damage the paint on it, I can quite easily touch it up because, well, there's nothing around it. But this is becoming quite difficult to work with. More adjustments will need to be made to the gun in future videos. But I think it's in a reasonably good position and the gun is in place now, which is the target for this video. So I will end it there. In the next video, I will spend some more time making sure the gun is properly centered and then install all the remaining photo edge detail onto this kit, making it even more difficult to handle. In the last video for this build series, I will apply some very small decals to the model and construct a very simple base. If you would like to see how this and my other models end up, please don't forget to subscribe. It will remind you when I release a video and it will help with the growth of this channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.